Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 15.5 Beta 3. This is currently available to developers, and hopefully soon by the time you're watching this video to public beta testers as well, although it may be out tomorrow like they did with Beta 2. It came out the day after the developer beta. Now, as you can see, the size of this is 683.8 megabytes. That's on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. It was between 500 to 600 megabytes on all the devices you see here. Along with this, Apple also released iPadOS 15.5 5 beta 3, watch OS 8.6 beta 3, TV OS 15.5 beta 3, Mac OS 12.4 beta 3, and a couple other updates as well. If you have a new Apple Studio display, there's now a 15.5 beta version out to fix the issue with the webcam, but you need Mac OS 12.4 to see that. Also, they updated AirTags as well. So AirTags have been updated to version 1.0.391. However, there's no way to force the update. It will just update on its own as it's connected to your device. So that has been updated as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about. You can see the build number is 19F5062G. And with this particular update, like I said, it was a bit unexpected. It's a week before I thought we'd have it, but now we have this update and it's not a huge jump from the previous one as far as build numbers. This one does have a new modem update with it. So we went from version 1.60.00 to 1.61.00 on the 13 Pro. Max. So hopefully that fixes some issues with connectivity. I know I was having issues with it jumping between different cell phone, cell phone towers and different signals. So hopefully that's resolved in this update, but it will take a few days to know that for sure. Now, as far as new features in this update, well, there's not a ton to see here, but there's a few things going on. Updates to sport kit have been updated. So maybe you're using the new TV feature where you're watching live sports wait for it to load here. If you're watching live sports, Friday night baseball, major league baseball, there's some new updates that allow for things such as the strike count, ball count, and also pitch count to be shown on the display. And also an ability to start from the beginning when you're watching a live production or a live game, and it will actually start from the beginning, or you can jump back to what's live. So those buttons will be available in beta three, but you need a live game for that to be shown. So if you go into your baseball and you're watching something live, you should see those things in real time. Now there's some wording changes in the background to quite a few different things, different apps, and also different Apple accounts. But the most striking thing had to do with iMessage. And the reason I say this is there's recent European Union laws that may take effect that would force the open compatibility of iMessage across other devices. Not necessarily to have iMessage on another device, maybe like an Android phone, but rather to have them interoperate with maybe RCS messaging. However, within the code, when you're maybe contacting someone, Prior to this, it would say you can only add people who are using an Apple device. Now it says you can only add contacts who are using iMessage, meaning maybe we'll see this opened up in the future if those laws pass. Maybe they're getting ready for that. It could be completely not the same thing, but that was something I saw that I thought was a little bit different. Also, there's wording changes in calendar. So if you're using Apple's calendar, also with Apple car key, nothing significant as far as that goes. This seems to be a bug fix and maybe a small change update. There's not a whole lot going on that's noticeable. So last time around, we had some small changes, different glyph updates. So in Safari, if you go in Safari and then you hit the share sheet icon, they updated the glyph for find on page. I shared this in my follow-up video, but this used to just be a magnifying glass. Now it's a sheet of paper with a magnifying glass. So that's been updated since beta two, but there's no major changes. One other thing I noticed was font size changes within emergency SOS. So you can see here where it says SOS and the letters are kind of large on the previous beta. They weren't that big. So this is a very minor change and actually reverts back to what we had prior to beta two. So you'll see SOS there. We're talking pixel differences here, but SOS is actually larger, very, very small changes with this update. So it's mostly a bug fix change and some wording changes in the background. The Apple pay where you can pay from your phone to another phone is not yet active that I can find. And there's just Apple cash change throughout where it says Apple cash, just like it does in messages. So in messages within messages, you can see it says Apple cash that used to say Apple pay that was recently updated with prior betas. And it looks like they're just updating that more and more throughout the OS. So it doesn't say Apple pay anymore. There's a new Apple cash logo. So small changes here and there with bug fixes and known and resolved issues 
as far as airdrop goes, seems to be the same or better than beta two. So if I go into my photos, maybe we'll airdrop this screenshot of the actual update. So we'll share this out and airdrop it. And maybe we'll airdrop it to the iPad pro here and let's see how quick it is. So it was pretty instant and it says sent prior to this. Sometimes it wouldn't say sent. So it looks like that's been resolved and much faster. And as far as the storage bug is concerned, if we go to general and then storage or iPhone storage, let it load for just a moment. We'll give it just a minute here let it load. It did load earlier. It does seem to be taking a little bit longer than it did with beta two, at least this time around. This is the second time I've loaded this on here. Let's load it on the iPhone eight plus as well and see if it's any different. It finished more quickly on the eight plus that's probably because there's less data, but this is definitely smaller than before on the 13 pro max. So maybe they've resolved it, but it definitely seems to load a little bit slower. As far as overheating, I know beta two, that was a big problem for a lot of people where it seemed overly warm all of the time. That doesn't seem to be a problem with beta three, at least so far, the back of this is barely warm at all. Whether I'm processing this running benchmarks or anything else, it seems to be much cooler than before. So maybe they've fixed that issue overall. As far as the notes and resolved issues and known issues. Well, the notes are exactly the same. If you go into the feedback app, you can see those here and we'll wait for it to refresh. They haven't updated it here, but they have updated it on the developer website with beta three notes. However, they're the exact same notes that we have in here with beta two. So that means one resolved issue and 11 known issues. And now it looks like it's completely gone. Now we'll take a look at battery life and performance and benchmarks in a moment, but that leads me to, should you install iOS 15.5 beta three? If you're already on beta one or beta two, definitely install it and then provide feedback as needed to help Apple make the product a little bit better make the OS more stable and more maybe usable, maybe some new feature suggestions as well. However, if you're wanting to solve issues that you might have with iOS 15.4.1 or earlier, I don't recommend installing a beta as typically you will have bugs on a beta and sometimes there'll be battery life. That's just not as good. Or sometimes there'll just be some random bugs here and there. So if you have anything critical that you do on your iPhone, I wouldn't recommend installing it. However, if you have a backup, you have a computer to maybe downgrade. If you need to, you could definitely do that. As far as battery life, well, this will take a few days to measure for sure. You have to use it full time for a few days to know that, but my battery health is still at 100%. I charge this every single night, put it on the charger when I'm driving take a look at the last 10 days and my battery yesterday, I had three hours and 20 minutes of screen on time, five hours and 42 minutes of screen off time and used about 50% of my battery. My home and lock screen is using a lot as I'm getting a lot of notifications that I need to customize and turn off. Of course I'm on Twitter a lot, so that's using quite a bit, but battery life has been okay. I haven't really noticed it being any less when I go to bed about 50% at night, but the overall numbers do not look that good here with beta two. So we'll see what it's like with beta three over the next few days. As far as performance, it seems to be about the same, whether that's on this device, the iPhone eight plus or any other device I've used, I've had no complaints of performance across any of the devices for most people. So that did take a second to move over to the app library there but I've had no complaints with beta one or beta two. As far as performance, performance seems to be pretty good. I did run benchmarks though, and they do seem to be a little bit lower this time. Now I'll run them again on the follow-up video, but benchmarks for the 13 pro max, I wanted to share with you and you'll see, I actually ran this twice because I wanted to see if I got any different score for single core. I had 1,741 for multi-core I had 4,665. That's actually quite low compared to the previous version or the previous time I ran it. So you can see it actually was run three times. And prior to that, it was a little bit higher on Saturday when I actually did the follow-up. So it's definitely a little bit lower. This can improve over the next few days. We'll have to wait and see what it does. Now, as far as any future public versions, I was a bit surprised we didn't have an iOS 15.4.2 today. We could see that within the next few days, but a few weeks ago, Apple stopped signing iOS 15.4. That means you can no longer downgrade to it. And usually within two to three weeks, we'll have a public version that will usually fix bugs and then add security updates. And usually we'll have just small updates and then we'll have more significant updates with iOS 15.5. So 
if we don't see an update this week from Apple, maybe they'll just wait until iOS 15.5 is done and then release that to the public. So now that we're on weekly betas, I would expect a beta every week until the release candidate, which is probably around beta five or so, beta six, a release candidate, and then a public release, usually by the end of May, before we get to WWDC in June. Then we'll switch over to iOS 16 beta one on June 6th, along with iOS 15 betas also, and then we'll have 15 and 16 betas all the way until a final release in September if Apple continues to do what they normally do. So that's what you can expect for a lot of updates in the future, but it does seem like Apple might be slowing down the overall iOS updates for 15 because, well, we're kind of feature complete at this point. iOS 16 is where, where we should see the next significant releases. So we shouldn't really expect a whole lot from iOS 15 anymore other than stability and maybe some battery improvements and performance. Otherwise, we're pretty much done as far as that goes. So that's everything with iOS 15.5 beta three, not a huge release, but some bug fixes and hopefully some significant fixes with the overall heat storage and more. Let me know how it's going for you in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.